exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode, we are learning about how to define or redefine your dating brand. All right. And to join me in the G spot, that is guest spotlight, I have the incredible, the wonderful Elisa Jacobs. The crowd goes wild. We also know her as Ginger Jacobs. Uh, <laughs> and you would also recognize her from a previous episode that we've done on this show. She got game, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that was when like we were going through quarantine and yeah. COVID and we did like a Zoom yeah. episode. But you guys also would know her as the founder or co-founder and co-CEO of Loop, which is a multicultural marketing agency. Mm -hmm. That's so awesome. So before we were speaking, it was like to bring you in talking about video games. Now we're going to talk about branding because mm -hmm. a lot of people need your help. Um, <laughs> But to warm you up, <laughs> this is true. This is true. To warm you up, I always have the guests yeah. start off. When when did you first fall in love with yourself? That is the spice breaker. Let's go. I love it. I think I got lucky. I fell in love with myself really early through art and having a really loving, supportive family. But I think I had to re fall in love with myself after the bumps and bruises that come through relationships in real life when you get out of your bubble. Mm -hmm. And I would say mid-20s was when I really got to know myself well enough to be fully in love with myself versus I like her a whole lot. <laughs> I want to hear the story. What was that defining moment yeah. where you were like, I haven't been giving myself the love that I deserve. I need to start pouring into myself or else. Wow. You said it was early 20s, so there had to be an, a pivotal moment or something happened. I want to hear the story of what happened. Yeah, I think that in my mid-20s, it was the first time I had gotten into relationships that were complicated, right? So I think we tend to call them situationships, uh -huh. but some of my more complicated relationships were heavier duty or – excuse me. Some of my more complicated relationships or situationships were heavier duty than a full-blown engagement, right? And so I think I was in these complicated situations where – I wasn't sure what it was. I don't know if either of us was sure what it was, mm -hmm. but we were investing and pouring into it. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point where I was putting so much into the it mm -hmm. or the other person without definition, without self-reflection, without direction mm -hmm. that I lost myself in it. Yeah. And we were both making the other person number one. And coming out of those, I had to really look at how do I love on me the way I love on others? How mm. do I show up for myself in the ways that I say I do? Yep. But you can be in love and not behave in love with yourself and someone else. Mm. And I had to really like do the doing. Did y'all hear her? She said you can be in love and not <laughs> behave in love with yourself the yeah. way that you do others. Okay? There's a spicy tip right there. Lisa just dropped <laughs> one on you. Okay? Um, this is great. So I love mm. that now you're at this place of – uh, being very clear on like who you were versus like who you are and then where you want to go. Um, we had done the episode, She Got Game, mm -hmm. where you're schooling us on like um, how dating is a game and you were relating it to video games because mm -hmm. like you were doing a lot of marketing at the time for that. And I'm sure still are. But like for this episode, um, we circled back to one another and we were kind of like, okay, you have a different perspective now mm -hmm. that you said you didn't have and you felt like you maybe have been or were jaded somewhat on the last episode. Mm. Um, I want you to speak a little bit about who you were on the last episode versus who you are now, just so that we can hear like why we're going to be revisiting relationships. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know that it's a, I was one person and now I'm another. Mm -hmm. I think I've had a perspective shift in the ways that I just spoke to, right? So in the same way that you can be in love and not behave in love, you can feel ready and not act ready. Mm. And so when we were talking about the gaming side, yeah. that's easy for me. I can talk business all day. Yeah. Metaphors, like playing the games, I had a blast. But when you start asking me, like, where are you creating space? How mm. are you showing up? And I almost didn't know how to react. And we're actually, like, friends. Like, it was actually a conversation. <laughs> I made you uncomfortable. And I was so uncomfortable. Things. I froze. I was like... <laughs> Oh, I don't want people to know I'm single. Then they're going to try to talk to me. <laughs> like, what? No. And to I the want point a relationship, where, but I don't want people to know I'm single and I don't want them to talk to me. <laughs> literally, literally. And to the point where like even my own my mom or like my best friends will be like, oh, you should let your friends know that you're like open and mm -hmm. you're ready. And I'm like, oh, no. Why would I do that? Like, it's like I legitimately it's the only thing I think I white lie about is like when mm. guys are like, oh, are you single? And I'm like, yeah, kind of. I'm like, no, 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 I am. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want you to talk to me right now. And at that time. I didn't recognize because I present somewhat feminine and I'm, mm -hmm. you know, a girl's girl and I have a lot of um, qualities that don't come across as masculine. Mm. 
I was not reflecting on how much I was living in my masculine mm. and how much being a workaholic my entire life, uh, working predominantly in men's industries, yeah. at the time being a venture-backed female CEO mm -hmm. in gaming, I was letting it trickle down and kind of transfer into my dating life. Mm. And so the way that I was showing up, not just in dating, but in not dating, yeah. <laughs> was in this very dominant, very bossy, very I don't want to deal with it way. And I think that you're so used to having to be in control to get stuff done in your business mm -hmm. life that the idea of submitting or surrender mm. almost are cringe words, yeah. especially for perceived alpha females. Uh -huh, for sure. When it's really about allowing. It's not necessarily, oh, I suddenly need to do all this work and chase. It's yep. about creating space. And so I'm sitting around talking to you or anyone else saying, oh, I'm ready. I just haven't met him or oh, I, I'm <laughs> still dealing with X baggage or whatever it might be. And the reality is I was traveling 80% of the time. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about work day in and day out. My entire life was around also entertainment marketing and impact work where whether I'm volunteering or throwing a party, there is no clear definition. Yeah. It's all blurred lines. Mm. And so I'm always in work mode or friend mode immediately to where if I'm friend zoning or work zoning you before you even open your mouth, yeah. there's nowhere to start a dynamic or a relationship. And I think the allowing has been the shift in perspective. It's not that I'm suddenly on the other side of it. I'm like, oh, I'm engaged, <laughs> girl. Can't wait. You know, <laughs> It's just when I started showing up for myself differently and creating more space. And at one point it took getting in a car accident, getting a puppy dog, stopping traveling so mm. much. But really showing up for me in the ways that I show up for others and I would expect or, or require a man to be in my life, yeah. everything shifted. And it's not that I'm like, oh, I found the one. But the only men that show up now are aligned in mm. the sense of they believe in monogamy and are capable of it or at least say they are, right? They have either healed or less trauma than mm -hmm. my <laughs> that's a big accomplishment he has less trauma than the yeah. usual ones I, I mean did. my bar my toxic. bar was pretty low <laughs> so like <laughs> um and like just showing up with intention and being vocal and wanting to court mm -hmm. and valuing you in the ways that you value you yeah and not um in this swirl of self-awareness mm -hmm. and figuring themselves out because I think sometimes as women we're like I want someone that's sure of me, right? I yep. don't want to have to prove myself or convince a man. But at the end of the day, we're asking men to be certain about us that mm -hmm. are not certain about themselves. Mm -hmm. And so it's really hard to not internalize that or think it's an enoughness thing. And it might be a little too much for them right now. Yeah. You want him to be madly in love with you, but he's not even madly in love with himself. Right. He is still going through his evolution and his self-journey sometimes. Right. Uh, you mentioned earlier that a part of it was – um, loving on yourself the way that you love on others. Yeah. So what did that look like? What does loving on yourself look like for like this journey? So I think loving on myself in this journey looks like showing up and it looks like making decisions oriented around what is in my best interest for myself and what is in my best interest to be the best version of myself for the rest of the world. And so it's really basic, to be honest. It's things like taking my vitamins in the morning and mm -hmm. creating routine. It's things like working out and being active and really taking it as a daily challenge, not mm -hmm. just fitness, but mental, physical, spiritual, financial fitness, mm -hmm. where it's not just about work, work, work. It's about also creating space within my business to allow for higher value clients, just like I'm allowing for higher value men. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was making health and home a priority where, you know, my parents live three hours ahead in Boston. Mm -hmm. My sister and my baby nephew and her family are in London. And so I would work, work, work. And then all of a sudden, by the time I got off work, it was past bedtime to call anyone. And my mm -hmm. family is the most important thing to me. So it's how do you shift aspects of your own day to day and just schedule where you put your time, your money, and yeah. your energy to be more self-oriented and to also like act in your priorities because I think wherever you put intentional attention is what you get more of, right? Mm -hmm, for sure. And so while my intentions have always been in the right place, I feel like my attention was very scattered. Mm. And my attention is singularly internalized now. It is singularly 
making sure my puppy's okay, who I'm like dying right now because I'm like, oh, I hope he's having fun <laughs> because I don't even like being away from home. And I used to travel 80% of the time. Yeah. So I think the basics are so much more important than it's not about spa treatments and retreats or <laughs> it's not just look, yeah. it doesn't just look like self-care um, no. and pampering yourself right and it's not just the soft life I love the softening of life but it's not this oh I'm going from team no sleep workaholic hustle culture to mm -hmm. soft life princess treatment right <laughs> not from me or anyone else it's just softer right yeah it's having a little more grace and ease it's enjoying the process of being home and settled and there is a domestic side of it it doesn't mean just cooking and cleaning and things like mm -hmm. that but at least having time to and enjoying it when you do because you want to take care of your home because you want to take care of your body and I think the shift for me again was more mindset and heart set than behavior because I was doing the behaviors just inconsistently mm -hmm. and almost as a chore and I think when you shift from it being a chore that part to a joy and from a got to to a get to mm -hmm. you just make the space or the space makes itself a lot of times like time has such an interesting energy to it in my opinion because I feel like for me I've never had a scarcity mentality except around time I never mm -hmm. felt like I had enough I always felt like it was running out not from the perspective of a biological clock or like mm -hmm. a deadline but in the day-to-day -day, it just it's like socks in the dryer you're like I don't know where this went <laughs> and now it's like if I take the time in the morning to meditate, to pray, to journal, to do the gratitude, to do all those things that everyone sort of like says they do, mm -hmm. but it's not a daily practice. Right. They're like, when I can squeeze it in, yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be perfect. And we paralyze in perfection where it's like, if I don't have an hour and a half to do all these things or an hour to work out at the gym or whatever, you just don't do it. At least for me, I'm an extremist. So mm -hmm. I'm like, well, never mind then. <laughs> And now it's like even the fitness challenge I gave myself, it wasn't about, oh, I need to achieve a certain physical appearance mm -hmm. or I need to hit a certain benchmark. I was like, I can be active 30 minutes a day for 30 days. And then 30 minutes a day for 30 days turned into another 30 and then mm -hmm. another 30. And six months later, it's the healthiest I've been in the last 20 years. And that was by sheer accident, right? But it was showing up every day. Consistently, like mm -hmm. keeping your word to yourself. And that's the how you build trust for self. Uh, so I'm hearing that you are managing your time better when it comes to what you're prioritizing and what's most important to you. How much time are we allotting to uh, making space, though, for partnership? And what I mean by that is uh, the same way that you show up for work every day because you have maybe... Um, a target that you want to hit or goals that you want to achieve. If we were to say the goal is relationship and right. companionship, how much time a day are we allotting to connecting with men, connecting to the thing that we say that we want? Valid question. Um, not enough. I think that the starting point for me, because I'm in the process, right? You know, when we spoke about doing this episode, I was like, I don't know if it makes sense to do it when you're on the other side of it and it's sort of like the success story mm -hmm. and here's how I got there, do it like that or in it together because I don't know that I am 100% there. I know that to start making space for that, I had to have enough space for me before anyone else could really enter. So we are, we are in the me, we're in the self, okay? Uh, which is which is very yeah. good. Before we can incorporate additional passion, intimacy, communication with men, and learning to say yes to them, mm -hmm. right? That like submission part, mm -hmm. that um, surrendering part, you have to make sure self is good. So we are right. in the self phase, essentially. And I think it's created the space though in terms of like, one is just being home more, right? Like at the end of the day, when I was always on the go traveling or with events and things, you don't, put yourself in a space or a place to mm -hmm. even have room and and to be fair it's optics too right like we're talking about the rebranding process yep. of dating and relationships and if you think about branding brand itself is the product or service mm -hmm. right but branding or marketing is ultimately the the promotion or communication of said product or service mm -hmm. and we make it much fancier right like we do strategy and influencer and experiential and PR and all of these buzzwords that make the brand come to life mm -hmm. across all these different channels and consumer touch points, right? 
But at the end of the day, how you present and how you show up as a brand, mm. if it's not working for your desired consumer, you have to pivot. And so I could be quite a hypocrite at times because I'm over here giving excellent, if I do say so myself, service <laughs> and advice to the world's largest companies and innovative startups. But on a personal level, I'm not stupid. I know that like people perceive what they perceive, mm -hmm. how you show up at an event, what you're wearing, how your social media looks mm -hmm. to men in terms of perception versus reality. It's not lost on me. But the rebel and the part of me that was sort of like, I don't care, I know who I am, mm -hmm. was very resistant to making optics changes because I don't have a problem with authenticity. Mm -hmm. But I think you have to be realistic too. And this is something I also still need to like be more considerate about and pivot. You know, even my social media, I was never consciously creating content, right? Mm -hmm. I would get photographer images from an event or I was like <laughs> And all your stuff because... is like red carpet or like – at a fun, exciting thing that you're doing. Right. With <laughs> and it's the not. The launch of something. Right. And and some of that's because it's professional obligations. Mm -hmm. Others, it's because I was lazy and other people took the content, right? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. And so it's like in these scenes and settings where at, at best you think I'm a raging workaholic that has a fun job. At worst, a socialite that just wants to be in the scene. Mm -hmm. When 90% of the time you're just like, I cannot wait to get home. <laughs> right. And you're not flirting and drinking and partying and dancing, you're on, you're on the clock. Mm -hmm. And when you're always on, you can't be mad if people perceive that because you're not posting family photos all the time. My family is very private. If I, if I can sneak my parents in because they're not on Instagram, I mm -hmm. will sometimes, but that's not something that shows up, right? If I'm home, I tend to shut off. So I'm not necessarily taking videos of like, want to see the meal I made, honey, right? <laughs> or like if you're volunteering downtown, it's not like a photo op with the kids. So I don't always um, tell the narrative of where my time and values are. Yeah. And I think that if you don't do that, you can't be upset that people don't know what your product is. Correct. And to your point, which I was completely deflecting and dodging, which is are you creating the time and are you doing the work? The reality is – same with branding. Like if I'm like, man, our sales are awful in California. Like the West Coast depletions are tanking. What's mm -hmm. happening? And you're like, you forgot to distribute. <laughs> you're, not, you're not on the West Coast at all. There's absolutely no inventory. Again, you're like, we weird sales went down, right? Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, again, it's you you have to. And so I've I've been better about it in the sense of my default is not no, which it has been for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Um and I think I candidly had to work through a lot of residue. You know, I think that – and it was not recent relationships or anything like heartbreak and obvious. It was actually just not letting go in a sense of true detachment mm. of things that were. And so even situations from years ago, I mean like double-digit years ago, if you don't reconcile how they show up for you mm -hmm. and how they affect other relationships – it's very easy to just be in a autopilot yep. mode, right? And so in my mind, I'm like, I barely talk to this person or these people. Like, they're not present in my life, whatever. But when you're able to allow yourself to love and let go and make peace with you, don't have to be mad. You don't have to hate someone. You don't have to have a story. There doesn't have to be a villain or a victim. You can be in misalignment and still have love. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it has space. Mm -hmm. And that's been... I think was like the sticking point for me that I didn't even recognize for years. And I was mm. in full other like live in relationships in between. Yeah. But had never fully like gotten the residue off. Yeah. Until I stopped being mad and was just like, actually, I did and do love you. And I can do that from over here and never need to. We don't have to stay. Explore it or. Connect it. Run that back. Yeah. Or, right. <laughs> because everyone's on different journeys and it doesn't mean someone else doesn't reciprocate that love or value you but again it's the being versus behaving in love if you're not on the same page of what that looks like in your love languages and your attachment styles in your own personal growth process situationally with your career and your yep. priorities there is no space and no place to move forward so I think the art of gracefully letting go and the art of releasing without needing to solve it 
you know, we're, we're problem solvers, especially mm-hmm. business women and yep. especially fixers and healers and empaths. And there's a part of it where you're like, I have to make it make sense. Yeah. It doesn't always have to make sense. It just has to make peace. And that's where I've taken the last year, two years, and I've done the work, right? Like in the sense of the coaching and the therapy and the things, mm-hmm. right? And the meditations, the manifestations and the prayer. But it's not about doing the work. It's actually like you do the work to stop doing the work, to get out of the story Mm -hmm. and to just be good with you, to be good in stillness. And on some level, I think that the partner that we seek is actually someone that you can be still with, that you want to be at peace with. And even in the Bible, it says that you choose a partner that you could go to war with. Mm. Not that you love so much and tells you nice things. (laughs) Not that, you know, rubs your feet and makes you a passenger princess right <laughs> that you could go to war with yeah that you want to do the work with yeah that you want to I mean you're married that you want to conquer child, with. Can like, you conquer and can you get through the conflict yeah uh because we are not promised like the rainbows right. and I always say like those you know glittery complex. gummy drops like there's going to be challenges and that's really how you know if there's longevity is being able to get through with conflict resolution and right. like is this person a ride or die for me I'm listening to you and I love that you are taking so much accountability. I think there's a lot of women who have it all together, right? And they're like, okay, I've hit all of these like, you know, bullet points on what I want for my life as far as like career and lifestyle is concerned. Now I need the partnership. And, you know, they usually come to me at that point because they're looking up and they're like, geez, why is it not happening for me? And then they'll lean into well, there just must not be enough good men out there. Right. First and foremost, that is a lie. Strong disagree. <laughs> Strong disagree. There is a ton <laughs> of men out there. But to today's topic mm. on, you know, how do you create or what is your dating brand? I think that sometimes we are putting out information that creates a perception that we are unaware of. Mm-hmm. And the person who you want may not want the brand that you have put out. Mm. So if you aren't able or capable of attracting what it is that you are attracted to, we got a problem. That's when I believe a tool such as the rebranding of your dating brand would kick in. And I think you mentioned earlier, like, you know, realizing it's not working for you. Right. So then one, I want you to tell me like what makes a good brand And then we can speak to kind of like how we roll that over into dating. Yeah. I actually love this conversation because it's so much easier for me to talk about brands. Let's talk in business then. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Well, I just, I have to say, and this is not meant to fangirl you, but like anytime I'm in conversations where I am that person for my girlfriends Mm -hmm. or my guy friends, honestly, because I'm locker room talk, not pillow talk. (laughs) So I'm the one they come to too. That's like. How do I fix this? How do I get the right girl? This, that, and the other. I'm like, there's a lot you're doing wrong, right? But when I talk to my girlfriends that genuinely are having trouble finding someone that I know are not crazy and are super beautiful inside and out and successful, all these things, I always refer them to you, whether it's your content or to go like reach out because I genuinely believe that you have a really incredible gift and grace around not making things wrong and still correcting. (laughs) And I think that's the feminine. No, but Thanks. seriously, Tell I my think younger that's- siblings that because they would be like, "She's a bulldog." So thank you. I, I but that's receive the femininity that. And, but that's the femininity. The best compliment I ever got was, um, a matchmaker was trying to set me up with someone who, of course, I said no, thank you, but getting better. Um, and she said to them, uh, "She's a total boss, but she's not bossy." Mm. And I, I see that in you and the way that you, you deal with even women like me, even as a friend, where it's like. It's sometimes like, I don't want to talk to Mari because I've not been doing very, very, very you know, like, <laughs> but it's, it's not, you can correct something and make it more right mm-hmm. without making it wrong. And I think that's true in branding. It doesn't mean you throw out the product or you throw out the yeah. company or it's, something's wrong. It just means there's opportunity for growth and improvement. It means that there's either things that are important for the brand identity, for the consumer to understand better, mm-hmm. to become a con- sort of to convert from audience to fandom, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like to love, if you will. Yep. And I think there's also a piece of it within relationships where you can be equally yoked. You can be strong and powerful without competing with a man. And obviously, 
it's all very fluid when it comes to gender identity and sexuality and various forms and formats of relationships. But for a woman that is interested in heterosexual, monogamous, mm -hmm. marriage-bound relationships, there is a lot that you have to really adjust if you want a partner that is a leader mm -hmm. because it takes a lot to lead a leader. <laughs> and so it can't be someone super insecure. It can't be someone that doesn't know their brand or themselves or their way of showing up. And it can't be someone who is still kind of figuring it out and doesn't know what they want. Mm -hmm. It has to be someone that knows their brand, knows their market, knows their value, knows their price point, their packaging, their purpose. And it is ultimately a purpose made. And I don't think everyone requires that, right? Not everyone needs a purpose partner. Correct. <laughs> I, I, I wish the same way not everyone needs to be an entrepreneur. I say this all the time. I was like, if I was not wired from birth, I wouldn't wish it on the world. Yeah. Like, I would love to be satisfied and content with my circumstances or complacent in just a simpler life in the sense of like the nine to five, living anywhere in the world, go home, yeah. enjoy my family, do it again. And on some level, that's exactly what I desire, right? Mm -hmm. And on another, I feel such a deep and profound calling on my life for why I put career first and yeah. why I see a level of impact in the world beyond myself and my family and my legacy. For me, I need that in a partner. I can't be with someone that just wants to hang out and like – have hot sex and make dinner together, right? Like, doesn't sound bad, but like, which is a good life for yeah. some people. For some people, yeah. that is like a good, that is a great life. For it's a some great people. life, and those people should be together. The yes. male and female who see that as a great life, yes. should be with each other. And if you do require that, then you have to stick to that, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I've tried dating out of alignment. I've tried dating the. So many things were the checkbox, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm like, why am I bored? Why am I uninspired? Mm -hmm. Why am I not mentally, intellectually stimulated and curious? Mm -hmm. And if you want, as your brand, adventure and purpose and passion and freedom and also complicated, yes, but stability and security mm -hmm. and heart and home, you need someone equally complex that wants and can satisfy those things and so instead of like compartmentalizing and you know identifying what is the checklist that everyone wants because I think the reality is 80% of women want the same 20% right <laughs> or 90 10 and the Correct. checklist is probably pretty comparable no matter what the background of said woman is yep but within those 5 to 45 qualities that someone might be looking for the only things that really matter are what you put at the top five, what you put at the top two, what you put at the top one. And that to me is where brand comes in not only to your brand and how you promote and show up and the optics, the presentation. If you want a man to love you for your mind and all you post is body shots, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that in sexual liberation and body you know, positivity. But you're going to get a man that is visually stimulated yep. more than mentally stimulated, yep. right? If you want a man that wants to protect and provide and, and be supported and have a more traditional dynamic, and the only thing you present is how smart you are and good you are at business, you're, you might get a contract, yeah. but not necessarily <laughs> the one you think you're looking for, right? And so I think that the bigger piece is your brand within relationships, and I feel like there are certain archetypes or stereotypes or roles that we all play. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have to try them on to see what what fits mm -hmm. too. And like in we're in Hollywood, right? So the entertainment says like the tropes. Like mm -hmm. what are those almost comedic tropes yeah. of the typical role? And I feel like I've played them all. And it was I don't want to be mentor or mother again. I mm -hmm. don't want to be breadwinner nor the prize or trophy again. I don't look for um, these caretaking roles on either end. I realize that for me, it's like the brand of marriage, the brand of partnership for me is friendship and freedom. It's trust, it's loyalty. And when you ask about how are relationships like brands or branding, the most important thing of why anyone buys anything or invests in anyone is trust. Mm. Brand trust is the number one across the board for generations as why someone 
feels brand love or affinity. So when you think about the quality of the product, which is also important, the intention. Some people do care about cause marketing or social responsibility or, again, purpose and yep. legacy, right? Um, do you like more minimalism and, like, clean and crisp and to the point and user-friendly? Or do you like just functionality and the bells and whistles and paying more for the packaging than the product? Ooh. All of that. Which, <laughs> Hello, know what LA. that looks like. <laughs> um, that was accidental. But welcome <laughs> to California. Um, welcome to LA, where right. the play is play. No, <laughs> but like seriously though, like it, it it really does show up in those ways. And so I think trust and loyalty is the most important, but also brand personality. You know, I think that we we like these certain things that we want to attract and we pray for and we manifest, but it doesn't mean there's synchronicity. You might be symbiotic, but that can cause codependence. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the answer is if it's supposed to be someone more complimentary or opposites attract. Yeah. Um, but I do know as maybe too self-loving as it sounds, I am most comfortable with those like me in the sense of being able to go from anywhere to anywhere, showing up in different settings that is equally comfortable having conversations like this on the couch until 5 a.m. or hopping a flight on a Friday without a return ticket, mm -hmm. right? And I, I know that's a lot to manage and to keep up with. I'm not ignorant to that, but I also believe that there are a lot of great men out there. I think, again, like I was telling you previously, like I did have those moments. We all get jaded, especially when you've been hurt by people that you think or allow yourself and create lessons to get hurt through yep. for your own growth. Um, by people that you think were possibilities, everyone goes through that like men ain't shit or women ain't shit or whatever where whether you're Scorn. blaming your geography mm -hmm. or the generation or apps culture <laughs> or whatever it might be, I don't believe that. And I actually do believe that the strongest belief wins. You had an episode For I sure. loved that was talking about the things your guests loved about men. Yes. And it's one of my favorite episodes you ever did because I Thank felt Thank you. That's my so episode one of my besties, Ezra D. Yeah. She's beautiful. Thank you. Inside I'm going to take the thank you for her beauty. Inside out beautiful. I, I inspire her glow now. I, listen, <laughs> I mean, bring, bring a little over here. <laughs> I'm um, But I loved that episode because I felt myself in her where she had that moment of like, oh, I don't know if I can name that many. And then she couldn't stop, right? When you stop stopping yourself, mm -hmm. when you stop thinking in terms of boundaries and self-protection and you just allow, men are amazing. For sure. And there's a lot of good men. And again, when I shifted how I was showing up for me, not how I was showing up for men, I still have work to do, right? Because yeah. I can still be like, why are we here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I am working on it. But how I show up for me has shifted so much so quickly, even in the last six months, much less the last year, that – I can't imagine how I even functioned in dating the last 10 years. Oh, wow. Because I'm like, no wonder I got – and no shade to, to the guys, right? Like I've been either not dating or celibate for just as long as I've been dating in my entire – because when I break up, I'm like done for a year and a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> it's like – it's like a <laughs> – It takes you out. Closes out. Clo it's not a – I think it would have been easier if I was one of the like get over someone by getting under someone – but I have to like really go through it. Mm -hmm. And so I've only been in four significant relationships ever. Um, I've dated and I've been in boyfriend, girlfriends. But when I say like affected for growth, yeah. right, or like really impacted. And so you take a year and a half off after each one. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of time. But when you do that self-reflection, you do all of that, um, not just self-love and self-care, but also self-accountability, also – really looking at if I'm getting evidence of these beliefs, how am I believing this within myself? How am I mm -hmm. showing up within myself? So when I joke like, oh, I don't know how I got through dating the last 10 years, it's not that the guys were so terrible, but they were in forms of themselves or mm -hmm. versions of themselves that reflected where I was within myself. For sure. I just maybe presented it differently, right? And so when they weren't able to show up in certain ways or I felt neglected or abandoned or overwhelmed or any of it, I can pinpoint what I was going through in my life internally, personally, unrelated to them, mm. sometimes in my career, sometimes just in the metamorphosis of life. 
that was a direct mirror. There's not a single time that there's ever been bad behavior or good behavior um, in business or pleasure. Because at the same time, it's like you have clients that owe you money Mm -hmm. or a six, seven figure deal that falls apart or whatever it might be. Anytime I've created something beautiful and then discreated it, I can absolutely see Mm. what I was doing within myself. So I do feel like I look back the last 10 years and I'm like, questionable. (laughs) Elisa, (laughs) questionable. But it wasn't because it was bad people. It was that I was not being discerning and I was not being accountable to myself and my needs Mm -hmm. to where I would adjust and accommodate, which no matter how you spin it, it's still going back to self-worth. It's still going back to you date at your level of self-esteem. Right. So right. this is something that I always say is show me your partner and I will tell you about yourself. Like right. I can, I know exactly who you are by the person you chose. I know exactly how you feel about yourself. I love that. Yep. So don't tell me that you love yourself and you're with somebody who is trash. I mean, right. So <laughs> right. <laughs> because respectfully, right. <laughs> I mean that in the most healthiest trashy way. No, yeah. but like, but you're hitting on, I think, a lot of women experience. Um, you mentioned earlier, you know, we were talking about, like, how do we identify even what's best for us? Yeah. And I think that um, I was hearing a few things as we were speaking to, like, the brand component about, like, what you present, right? And, like, optics. But the element about these relationship experiences that you have, through these relationships, they are all learning lessons, right? Mm-hmm. But what we should remember is, did I like who I was when I was with that person? Do I like how I showed up? Okay, I did like how I showed up when I was with that person, or I didn't like what this person brought out of me. This is how I want to show up next time moving forward. Right. And then we also take into account the dating component of, let me try dating multiple different flavors multiple right. different type of men i'm gonna i'm gonna dance i'm gonna dance and let allow 20 different men to lead me and all of them are gonna lead me differently i'm gonna see who i like that leads me and how they showed up in that leadership so that right. i can see if that works well for me but also again remembering how i show up in that situation and do i like how i show up with this type of leadership does that work for me and if we're not getting the dating experience it's hard to measure what's best for us we're just going off of then other people's relationships or what we see or what we want is imaginary if we're not able to compile these experiences right or apply the lessons right and apply the lessons right lessons but then you're not practicing right it's like okay yeah, I messed up, but like I didn't learn really how to do things differently because I didn't right. jump back in the game to try a different approach. And I think it's – see, that hits because I think that the getting back in the game part is we shift how we show up as a result of what we went through initially, right? And so even when I was talking about the experiences you go through and the relationships that like worked or didn't work – they all are working for you, right? It's all preparing you, just like things in your career preparing you for what's to come. And, you know, the trials and tribulations aren't necessarily negative either, right? Like obviously the highs are higher and the lows are lower, but I've learned more from the challenges than I have from the triumphs for sure. Mm -hmm. I think that what I challenge myself and anyone to do a better job of is not closing down or shifting to the point where you lose what is the most authentically you that you like the most about you when you show up. Because I think when I've had those attachments that were Mm -hmm. harder to detach from or, and I mean like lingering for years, like years. Oh, you're not alone. Yeah. A lot of people have the lingering going on. Okay. (laughs) But I also had the denial Mm. because I was like either out of communication or Um, out of proximity, or just genuinely not interested, right? But I hadn't processed what I liked. Because when you leave a relationship, Mm. it's very easy to focus on what didn't work. You know why you left. Yeah. Or why they left or whatever. You you know the exit strategy. happens in your solitude. You, You know the exit strategy, but you forget to reflect on 
innovation or launch, mm. right? Like, you know, when a Back business goes out, you know, why, <laughs> you know, why Blockbuster went out of business, but you forget how Netflix started, mm. right? Yep. And so I think there's a piece of it where we don't want to go into the positive emotions sometimes because it can hurt or feel nostalgic mm -hmm. or feel like we're backsliding. But if you can do it from the lens of watching it on TV or separating yourself from it and actually enjoy what worked, why you started. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the honeymoon phase, but you know what worked. And what happens is when you leave, you tend to try to fix all the things that were broken or wrong, but you don't carry through. You didn't date someone because you thought they were a bum dude, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you dated them because at the beginning – it worked. You liked yep. them a lot. You might have loved them. Mm -hmm. And so that was the part for me where like I didn't even start, I think, getting closure and healing until years later because mm. I was just like, I'm over it. I'm past it onward. But, oh, I forgot that was my best friend and I hadn't been yeah. in a loving relationship since then that I opened up that much as a friend mm. because I didn't want to get that hurt again. So then you have this false perception that that person is so important or was so important, but it's not about them. Yeah. It's about you liked how you showed up as a friend. Yep. You liked how you showed up as a caretaker. And I remember reflecting back on certain circumstances and being like, was that wife practice or was I admin and uh, <laughs> the cleaning lady and the chef and the prayer warrior and the nanny and the, right? Like, <gasps> It's a fine line yeah. when you're like, oh, I really love how I showed up for him. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I loved showing up for me. Mm. And so I had and have to, I won't even say had to, I'm working on looking at how I feel, not just how I feel about how I'm showing up for you. Because mm. the part of me that is secretly much more feminine and wants to be yeah. catering to and supporting and allowing um, – which is so crazy to even hear myself say out loud, mm -hmm. right? Doesn't always measure by how am I feeling? Is it serving me? Mm -hmm. Am I satisfied? Can I be selfish? Am I satiated? Mm -hmm. Am I fulfilled? It's, oh, I, I did a good job, mm -hmm. right? That goes back to the work stuff. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I did a good job at showing up for them. I did a good job at being a girlfriend. Yeah. I did a good job at whatever. And I'm like, that doesn't mean I enjoyed my job. <laughs> and so <laughs> I did it well. Yeah. It I'm like, happy. great. I got the title, but like <laughs> didn't really love clocking in and out. Right. And so that's the piece I think that we have to look at too is like, okay, do you like who you are? Not just because of who you help them to become mm. or be. And if you are satisfied and appreciate holding space for another person like that, it's hard to define when it feels good because of being the muse mm. or amusement or love and, and playfulness and you see them light up and yeah. you see them flourishing with you versus are they holding you back? Are they dimming your light? Or is all of your attention on them to where you're not tending to your own garden? Mm. And then you're mad at them, but they didn't ask you to move everything over, yeah. you know? I think the you're bringing like some great things up. I think the other element though to like – uh, being present, right? Because that's really what it is, is being present and being mindful and operating with a higher level of consciousness when it comes to how you're showing up, how you're showing up in relation to them. Do I like how I'm showing up in relation to them is being reciprocated, right? right? I think that's essentially what you're saying for that part is like, does this make me feel good because you make me feel good or does it make me feel good because I like making you feel good? Right, right. With that being said, though, I think the other element that we his hit the mark on when we don't have the tools or coaching or relationship experience even is how to effectively articulate mm -hmm. that our needs are going unmet. And so all we know is to either like beg, mm -hmm. throw it away or try harder to please that person right. for us to get the thing that we want when really we need to learn the communication tools in order to see if we can guide our partner right. to opening up that new level or that thing that we think that we need. Yeah. With this being said, um, you have dropped a ton of nuggets and I'm so proud <laughs> for this like new phase that you were in, this new journey, Oof. this new plight 
Um, I think it's amazing. And I think that it's okay to be in in it, right? I want women to connect with people who are in it, not just people who are on the outside of it, right. not people who are just at like step one, but you are in it and you are taking us through this journey the same way that we would for, you know, a, a, a product that needed, you know, rebranding. I think you being a brand architect um, makes you masterful at it when it comes to your career. We need to use the same lens though when it comes to our mm -hmm. love life. And you even mentioned like, okay, what's that next step? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which sounds like distribution. <laughs> <laughs> so we will, we will, we will check launch. on. I will, we'll I will check on. Launch. I will check on you um, <laughs> through that process. But you're gonna let everybody know like where to find you yeah. if they want to get in touch with you, if they want to use um, your services, right? Yeah, sure. Um, if it's a single guy or someone who knows that they got a friend for you, share how people get in touch with you. Vet, you vet. <laughs> <laughs> I will do that. You guys, Mar yeah, let me know. <laughs> I will do all vetting. Um, I'm at Ginger Jacobs on all socials. It's at G I N G E R J A C O B S. Um, we also have Loop at Loop Says, L O O P S A Y S, and loopstudios.com, L O O P S T U D I O S.com. And I'm excited to keep talking and I'm excited for my updates because I am dating again. I am actually allowing the work. I just haven't been so inspired. Yeah, we're going to start talking about you putting in <laughs> at least an hour into that area of your life, okay? Um, <laughs> we'll you manifest guys, time. You, we're going to make the time. You guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mari. Go to thespicylife.com. Share this episode with a friend. Uh, you know, click and subscribe to the Spicy Life podcast and share, 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 share. Also, uh, I will be having a workshop coming up soon on um, how to be more effective on dating apps. Um, and some of it will be around like rebranding. So uh, we'll see if Miss Ginger Jacobs over here can pop her head in on that session. Uh, but looking forward to you guys sharing this episode once again with a friend. And there you have it. You've just been spiced. The Spicy Life.